welcome to Girls Free Mind. Today's uh, topic of discussion is something that's very, very simple. It is, is mental health important? Do you need to consult a psychologist if you feel that you're having a problem? If you know the answer to this question, please mention it in the comment section. I will be answering some of the questions that most people think about but don't really ask. So, the first question, what is mental health? Well, to put it in very layman terms, mental health is the state of your mind. And are you happy and in a good place with it or not? If you don't feel happy, if you feel that you're stuck in life and your work is not going so well, you're feeling distracted, you're not able to concentrate. So then you'd say that you are facing stress, which is a mental health issue. Yes. And stress is something we all experience. One, one point or the other, you will go through stress in your life. Even if you're a student watching this video, you, maybe, you may have an exam coming up and that may cause you stress, that may cause you anxiety. You may have a friend who is angry over you or not talking to you. You may have problems between you and your parents. You may feel that your parents don't understand you. These are real problems. The point that I am trying to put forth is that no problem that a person is facing is small or meaningless. Whether it is a child feeling that his or her parents don't understand them, it is a real problem or if it is an adult facing problems in their relationships. None of these should ever be classified as, oh, that's a meaningless problem. I mean, I shouldn't bother myself with it. No. These are very real problems and if you do not address them at the start, eventually they will become huge. Let's take an example. Suppose a person like me is facing challenges at work. My boss tells me that you have to complete this project and this stuff within like three days. And three days is not enough for me. But somehow I don't have the courage to tell my boss that you've given me so much of work and you're not giving me ample amount of time to complete it. The work I may present to you may not be satisfactory. I don't say that. Instead, I say, okay, boss, it'll be done. I sit down to work, three days pass by like this, and your work is not done. You're in a state of panic, you're stressed out, you don't know what to do and what to present. Wouldn't it have been better if you just spoke to your boss at the first instance when he gave you the project itself? and tell him that I'm sorry, but I understand that this is important. I can provide you part of it by three days, but it will not be possible for me to finish the whole thing in three days because it's just not enough time. I mean, if you start to say things, it becomes easier eventually. It may not be easy at the start. It takes a lot of courage to actually stand up to your boss, especially if you do not have a good rapport with your boss. So this is just an example, an example of a stress we face in our daily lives. But there are many other kinds of stress which are present in our immediate environment. Like a stress could be anything, like a problem with your parents, a problem with your spouse, problem with your friends. All of these contribute to stress and none of these are small problems. If you are facing stress, go to a mental health professional. I mean, Discussing with friends is one thing, but going to someone who will not judge you is something that is entirely different. Trust me, we all have skeletons in our closets. None of us are clean. We are all living in the gray matter of life, in the gray region. So we all have problems we are dealing with. We may appear to be very happy, outgoing, living our life to the fullest, going on trips and stuff, but that does not mean that there is no problem or our life is a fairy tale. Nobody's life is a fairy tale, let me tell you that. Everybody has problems. Some of them are good at talking about it, some are not. Some like to discuss it with their friends, some are introvert and find it very hard to talk about their problems. This does not mean that the other person does not have a problem. This is the common misconception we have in our society. Most people feel that someone who looks happy or lucky is not does not have a problem in their life and they have such an amazing life i wish i could have that but the thing you don't know is that maybe a person suffering from a lot of problems in their lives but they just don't tell you about it 
or they just don't feel that they have to project the problem out or talk to anyone about it. That does not mean that you should also not talk to someone about your problems. Look, if you are facing problems, if you're facing stress, if you are dealing with a loss, whether it's in relationship or you have, you're going through stages of grief with the loss of a relative or a loved one, you need help. It's not wrong to ask about, to ask for help. I mean, the sooner you can get help, the better you'll start feeling and quicker as well. So why not get help? Why have we made such a stigma about mental health? I mean, come on, if someone goes to a counselor, the person might just feel stressed out or may need to talk to someone. That may just be it. Why have we made it such a huge issue that if someone's going to the counselor, the person has to be mad or suffering from a personality disorder? Why? If someone's going to a counselor, that does not mean that that person is narcissistic, a psychopath, or suffering from histrionic personality disorder. That person may have PTSD. That person may have been in an accident. I have been in an accident, so I can attest to that. I still have PTSD, yes, I still do. But this does not mean that if someone's going to a counselor, they necessarily have a personality defect. When we go through stages of grief after we've lost a close a person who was close to us, it becomes very difficult to go on with life imagining that that someone is not going to be there. You can go to a counselor and seek help. If you are suffering, if you are going through the stages of grief, if you are not able to cope with the grief, others may be able to. That does not necessarily mean that everybody in the family will be able to cope with grief in the same way. The problem here is that many times parents just shut their kids down. Oh, it's it's okay. You know, you lost you you lost so and so person. It's alright. It's part of life. Just get over it. You know, it's been two months. How long are you going to cry? This is not the right approach. This is never the right approach. You have to understand what that person's going through. If you cannot put yourself in that person's situation and understand what your child or your friend is going through, ask that person to get help from a counselor. Someone who can actually help that person pass through those stages of grief in a setting where the person is not judged. The person will go get through the grief and will be able to move on. But if you just try to put a lid on the problem and just shut it down, it's not going to help. And in future, the person may develop anxiety, depression, and other stress-related disorders. Is that what you want? No, right? You don't want that. Then ask your friend or your family member to get grief counseling. Grief counseling is available if you are facing loss in relationships, if you have faced a breakup, which is really hard. I mean, you thought you will spend your life with someone that didn't happen breakups are really hard i mean it's not a joke the way people have made it if you've had a breakup you need help you get help you owe it to yourself you don't owe it to anybody else you don't owe it to the society you don't owe society anything especially when it comes to your mental health and when you know society will not understand your problems why bother with the society at all You need help, you get help. Don't care about what others say. Society, their primary primary role is to judge others and criticize their actions. In one sentence, this is what society is. So when you need help, if you go and tell those typical people of society that you are thinking of going to a counselor, they will not agree with you. They will say it's a phase, it'll pass. You'll get better, you don't need help. But if you need help, if you are feeling that you're not getting better, you go get help for yourself. The primary point I'm trying to make here is if you need help, you get help. Society will not understand your problems. Their primary role is to judge, to criticize, to tell you that it's a phase and you'll get through it. If it doesn't feel like a phase to you, if it feels like you're unable to get through it, if the problem makes you lie awake at night, you need to see a mental health therapist now suppose you've decided to go against the society go against the norms and get help because you feel you need it and you owe it to yourself how to decide whom to approach should you go to a psychiatrist or should you go to a psychologist 
This is a pretty crucial question that people come across when they finally decide that they need help. Whom to go to? There is a significant difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. A psychiatrist can give you drugs in case you need it, like anti-depression drugs, anti-anxiety medicines, and stuff like that. A psychologist, on the other hand, can provide you with therapies like EMDR therapy, CBT therapy, and other psycho analytical therapies that are available in case you need it. So basically, if you need medicines, you will have to go to a psychiatrist and if you need psychological therapies, you will go to a psychologist. But how to decide whom to actually approach for your problem? What you can do is you can go to either of them. Now, psychologists and psychiatrists understand each other's profession very well. If you go to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist feels that you do not need medication, but you need more of the psychological therapies, he will or she will direct you to a psychologist. Now, if you've gone to a psychologist and your psychologist feels that you need drugs, you need some help to get through your problem, to sleep better, she or he may suggest that you go to a psychiatrist. Or they both may go hand in hand. Your psychologist and your psychiatrist may work together. They may collaborate with one another and they may decide amongst themselves which type of therapies you need, what medicines you need, and the different aspects of your therapy. So you need not, you know, figure out yourself whom you need to go to. You can go to either of them. You can also go to your family physician and ask if you need help. However, if you are not satisfied with what your doctor is telling you, if your doctor tells you that it's a phase and you'll get through it, you are not getting through it, you can always get a second, a third, a fourth opinion till you feel okay with it. That is perfectly all right. You are facing a problem that nobody understands because everybody's problem is different. And everyone thinks that their problem is the biggest one in the world and what others are facing is nothing. So what I am facing is the biggest. And because of that, they may downplay your problem. So you understand your problem best. You need help. You go get it because you deserve to help yourself and you deserve that much help. You're a good person who wants to live a full life. Why should you lead half a life when there are help, when there is help and resources available at your disposal? So get that help today. And for the final part, drum roll please. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the like button, leave your comments. Have you ever been to a psychologist? Have you ever been to a psychiatrist? This is a safe space. Nobody's going to judge you, trust me. Or you can email me your problems. You can email me topics on which you want me to make videos on. I will do that. If you're facing anxiety, depression, stress, any kind of psychological issue, you can check out my blog. The link is in the description. You will find a variety of articles to help you through your problems. Or you can email me. Email me and I can send you the link to the articles. Either ways, take care of your mental health. You only have one life and you only get to live it once. So live it to the fullest and do not settle for anything less. And I will see you in my next video. Again, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, stuff like that. And I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.